Good morning, everyone. Today is Sunday, May 17th in the year 2020, and today is the sixth Sunday of Easter. And as we begin, I invite you to please join me in prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. As we begin today's meditation, I will give you the reading, the gospel text for today, and I will encourage you to take a moment, pause the video, and read the text of today's gospel. And today's gospel is taken from John chapter 14, reading from verse 15 through 21. So, you'll notice after reading today's gospel, you'll notice that today's text is a continuation of last week's gospel in which Jesus told his disciples that he was going away. And then Thomas wanted to know where Jesus was going. And he wanted to know how to get there. And all of this conversation took place at the dinner table in the upper room on the night of Jesus' betrayal. And so we know that based on that conversation, we know that there was indeed a lot of sadness in the room that night. And as the disciples listened to Jesus, the uncertainty of their life going forward was slowly settling on their hearts. And in the disciples' minds, it was becoming clear that their friendship with Jesus, their physical interaction with Jesus was coming to an end. He's leaving them. He's going away. And he offers them no invitation for them to come with him to the place where he is going. And so understandably, they are heartbroken. They're worried. They're sad. They're feeling abandoned. They're feeling let down by Jesus. And then here in today's gospel text, Jesus makes an astounding promise to his disciples and to us as well. He says, I will not leave you orphaned. And he tells them he's sending another who will be their comforter, their advocate, their helper, their guide. And Jesus says this advocate will be with them forever. So yes, Jesus says, I will not leave you orphaned. It's a promise from Jesus, and it certainly makes all the difference in the world. And so we too need to hear this promise from Jesus with the fullness of our spirit. 
Because this promise speaks directly to some of our greatest and our deepest fears and challenges. These words of Jesus are indeed words of reassurance and hope. And they make an enormous difference when feelings of uncertainty, when anxiety and fear and vulnerability have taken hold of us. And they remind us that our journey in this earthly life is always with God. We never walk alone. And Jesus says it very clearly in today's gospel text. He says, this advocate will be with you forever. And he elaborates further and says, this is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. And Jesus says, but you know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. The promise is made. And indeed, the promise was kept. And we know how the story unfolded. We know that when the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, finally descended on the disciples at Pentecost, the world of onlookers concluded the disciples were drunk. Yes, the world is able to see the manifestations of the Spirit present in the disciples, but the world cannot comprehend the Spirit. The Spirit of God is being sent to dwell not only among the disciples and us, but is being sent to dwell within them and within us, both individually and collectively. The Spirit of God takes residence in all who receive him in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Spirit comes not only to empower us for new life in Christ, but it also comes to link us, to connect us in a deeper relationship with God. It comes and it brings with it Jesus' promise presence to our life. It abides in us as we face life with all its challenges and all its blessings. It comes and it brings Christ's promise presence to our decisions, to our effort, to our work, to our desires, to every facet of our life and activity. The Spirit comes to dwell in us so that you and I may continue to be Christ's presence in the world. Yes, we who believe in the Holy Spirit, we who have received God's Holy Spirit. Our lives are different. Our lives have purpose and meaning. Our lives have direction and hope and promise because of the very fact that the Spirit of God shows us the way forward. 
Yes, for all of us, there are indeed occasions and moments in life when the changes and the chances and the circumstances of life do leave us feeling like orphans with no one to care for us, feeling like there is no one to comfort us. We have questions that seek answers that will bring us reassurance and peace and hope and clarity. We want to know that things will get better. And I suspect that the disciples were feeling the same way as they listened to Jesus telling them that he is leaving. Yes, the one for whom they gave up everything now tells them he is leaving them. Life is full of these kinds of situations that uncover these feelings of uncertainty and helplessness within all of us. And when these relationships that we have cherished, that we have sustained, that we have become accustomed to, when they end, it is never easy. And they leave us trying to pick up the pieces and to put our lives back together again. Because relationships are the foundation of life. And it is precisely in those relationships that we experience the blessings of life. It is in relationships that we know and learn what it is to love and to respect and to honor and to care for one another in mutually beneficial ways. It is in relationships that we learn the meaning of and we experience the power of forgiveness. It is in relationships that we experience the grace and the mercy of God. And yet, it is always a challenge for us to sustain those relationships and to reveal in them and through them the full expression of all the possibilities that we are capable of as children of God, as Christians. Things like love and forgiveness, compassion, grace, gentleness, kindness, things that St. Paul calls fruits of the Spirit. All of us, to varying degrees, have experienced loss. We know what it's like to have someone or something that was near and dear and familiar taken away from us. And in this present time of this pandemic, so much has been taken away from us. So much has changed for us, we've had to make adjustments in the ways that we have lived together and worked together and worshipped together and greeted one another. Uncertainty is all around us. Fear has raised its ugly head. And that fear points to the deeper reality that by ourselves, we are not enough. It reminds us that yes, indeed, we need one another. And most certainly, we need God. We are not the master of this universe. Our faith journey is never easy. And it certainly is never predictable. There are always challenges ahead, but we will always find our way forward if we hold on to the promise of Jesus, to the Holy Spirit of God, 
leading us and empowering us. Amen.